and welcome to This Week in Travel. I'm your host, Michelle Robson, an editor of Turning Left for Less. I'm in sunny Copenhagen today, sitting in front of a fountain near the waterfront, uh, and I've just been doing a tour of the city centre. I have to say I've been really impressed with the city. It's not cheap, but it's really beautiful and very easy to get around. Lots to see and do. But this week, we're actually going to be looking at a different destination. We're going to be concentrating on Palm Springs, and I'll be interviewing my friend, TV presenter Patrick Hoy about his love for the city as well as adding my own experience. Because it's a longer program this week we won't be doing any news items. So let's have a look at Palm Springs. So this week I'm welcoming Patrick Hoy who is a good friend of mine, a frequent traveller and a TV presenter for QVC. He's got a real love of Palm Springs which I visited for the first time uh, a couple of years ago and so I thought he'd be the perfect person to talk about uh, going to Palm Springs and how to get the best out of it. So thank you for joining me, Patrick. Hey, I'm really excited to be here. Um, it's so great to see you again. And hello to everyone who's watching and also listening. So what is it that you love about Palm Springs? Because I know, <clears throat> I know you have friends there, but you return time and time again. What is it you like about it? I do, um, and and you're absolutely right. One of the one of the main draws for me, of course, are my friends who live there. My my best friend uh, actually lives there. He is British, was the best man in my civil partnership, my uh, wedding ceremony, and uh, so I go out there to visit him, and he and his partner, uh, who originally lived in L.A. And then during the pandemic, they bought a fix me up place in Palm Springs. And, uh, you know, they just want it out of the big city and they've uh, gone there and uh, they're both luckily lucky enough to be able to work remotely. Um, plus, it's just a whole different lifestyle. And I think the reason that they went there to live there is probably one of the main reasons that. I love going there to vacation and to holiday, and and I know you as well, and probably anyone else who goes to Palm Springs, is that uh, it's just so relaxing and it's it's beautiful. I mean, you have this combination of terrains also from the desert, uh, warm, dry weather, um, but it's right right beside mountains. And in, in fact, when I was there in uh, March of this year. Uh, as you looked in Palm Springs, you can have cocktails outside because the weather was beautiful. But then when you looked out at the mountains that that surround, almost surround totally Palm Springs, or at least one big side of it, they were snow-capped mountains. <laughs> so, so you have this beautiful, you know, you have this beautiful scenery that you look at, but you have this amazing weather, especially I would say the peak period time to go there is probably October until about April-ish, end of April, May. Um, otherwise, it's very, 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 very hot, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Um, but you know, while the rest of the world is cold and freezing, um, you can go there. It's it's kind of like going to Palm Beach in uh, in Florida. So so I just love it. There are great restaurants, and uh, besides just Palm Springs, there's the greater Palm Springs area. Uh, so you've got Joshua, a Joshua Tree, the State Park right there. Um, there's just a lot to do. Plus, plus, you know what? It's a great, it's a great place to uh, combine with the trip to LA or San Diego if you want to do multi-cities in Southern California. Uh, I think it's one of those places that uh, definitely you should add on to your list. Yeah, absolutely. And um, totally agree with the, the comments about when to go, <clears throat> excuse me, which I think is quite important because people, I think, also have the same problem with Vegas. They don't really understand quite how hot it is in the summer. You know, it can be like 45 or even hotter. Um, and it's yeah, just a bit too much, really. So I went when I went, I think, in December, um, mid-December, and it was a little chilly, but they were saying, um, it was unusually cold, but we were still in the pool uh, and sitting outside even for dinner because they they seem very well, um, you know, geared up for when it's a little bit cooler. They have all the heaters on outside and blankets and things. So, you know, you can pretty much eat out all year round there, which is great. I, I totally agree. In fact, I'm sure we'll talk about uh, maybe some I'll share some tips on favorite restaurants of mine and favorite bars and 
watering holes and and things to do. But uh, when I was there in March, it was actually a little bit cooler. I was there at the end of March. And because, uh, you know, you probably have read that this year at the beginning of the year, uh, all of Southern California had wacky weather. I mean, lots of rain, um, much colder weather. And and as a result of the rain, uh, Palm Springs was much greener this time than I've ever seen it before. Because, of course, remember, you're right there in the desert, the Coachella Valley. Um uh, but it was also much cooler at night. And so many of the restaurants that we went to, you're absolutely right. Uh, we walked in. In fact, we were thinking, oh, gosh, should we cancel the reservation or not? It's a little bit cooler. And, and you know, you you don't think to take your your down coats and, <laughs> and jackets at, uh, in the wintertime to Palm Springs. But we shouldn't have even worried because there, you're absolutely right. There were the heat lamps that were out in full force and and they know what they're doing there. I mean, this is plus Palm Springs is a pretty chic, classy city, um, although that doesn't mean there's not a little bit of a wild or edgier side to it as well, um, which I'm sure we'll talk about. <laughs> yeah, I think you, you mentioned before about why you love it. I think what what I uh, agree with definitely is just the scenery which I maybe hadn't thought about. I thought more about the kind of whole 50s retro vibe and all the retro houses and buildings, which I love all that kind of Rat Pack era. But I remember when I'd been there uh, a few days, we were literally just driving to the drugstore and driving down the street and just with the mountains and, uh, you know, sort of towering over there, sort of that red colour and then the palm trees lining the street. It's just, you're like, wow, that I'm just like driving down a normal street and it's just such stunning scenery. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think, um, you know, uh, part of it, you were talking about that style. And so in America, we call that mid-century architecture and, and mid-century style. And, and Palm Springs is definitely known for that. Um, you know, when you think of Paris and you think of uh, Paris, there's a time period from the 1920s and the whole movement of the Art Deco movement in style. Well, in Palm Springs, it was uh, last century in the 50s, 40, late 40s, 50s and early 60s uh, with a unique style that, that really took off in Palm Springs and, and other parts of the country. Think Frank Lloyd Wright houses and, um, and they call that mid-century. And it is, it's fascinating. In fact, there are architectural tours that you can go on in Palm Springs. In fact, I would say if you're planning a trip to Palm Springs, one of the first things that I personally do, even though I have friends who live there, who I, who I, whom I stay with, is I will go look at one of the uh, Palm Springs Chamber of Commerce uh, websites, either palmsprings.com or visitpalmsprings.com, or there's also visit greaterpalmsprings.com. And, and I always like to see what are the events going on because it, it has become quite a destination now that there are lots of conferences. Of course, you have the Coachella, the music festivals that are going on at that point. But there are a lot of, um, uh, it, it kind of like Vegas has gotten to where there are lots of business meetings and uh, that happen there. Um, some of those events that happen, of course, are architectural tours that are, that are draw big amounts of people to the city. Uh, one of the one of the first suggestions that I want to give all of your viewers and listeners uh, to do, I, I love to walk, and you know, us being city folks, especially being here in London, um, even when I'm in Palm Springs, I love to walk around. Uh, it, it is a city that definitely, I think it's worth having a rental car. Um, uh, if you don't want a rental car for the whole time, then if you want to go out to Joshua Tree Park, National Park, um, and, and some of the other things, it's worth doing that. But one of the things to do in uh, Palm Springs, there are walking tours. And you can either uh, go like to the Business Bureau when you get to Palm Springs and, and go on an organized one. Or I've found uh, there's, I don't know if you've ever used them, Michelle, it's called uh, gpsmycity.com. And there are walking tours. You can download, it's an app onto your phone, and then you can put in what city. They have cities all over the world. And there are walking tours that you put your headphones in 
And in, in Palm Springs, they have a couple of them. One is called Introduction Walking Tour. So if you're down on South uh, Palm Canyon Drive, kind of in the thick of it all, um, this will take, give you an introduction to do that. There's another one that's fascinating on, on gpsmycity.com that's famous houses in Palm Springs. And uh, so it's about a three hour tour. And of course, the nice thing when you're doing something on your app, you can start and stop it. If you want to do half of it one day, half the next day or in the morning, then go to lunch, you can do that. And on that one, you, you get to see uh, a lot of the famous, uh, the celebrities who had houses there, it doesn't mean you'll go into the houses, but you'll go by them, you'll have the narration. Um, and uh, I think that's an interesting point, Palm Springs being so close to Los Angeles, um, this really is the playground of the stars, and it especially was during that mid-century point in time. So Marilyn Monroe had a house there. Dean Martin did. Elizabeth Taylor, Liberace. Um, and these are all, you can even do open air, you know, kind of like we have here in London and in New York, you can do uh, open air bus tours and, and go see these houses. But I kind of like doing the walking ones. Um, so yeah, that, that architecture is, uh, and you can see that in the facades of the houses. Um, uh, you can also see that in a lot of the restaurants, a lot of the bars. Um, it, it is that mid-century is, is quite the look of Palm Springs. And to me, it just, again, makes it so ever very chic. <laughs> Absolutely. And it almost feels, I think, a bit unreal when you're in the downtown area with all those old buildings. It's almost like being on a film set in some ways. Mm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And speaking of being downtown, another thing that I really like doing, um, Michelle had asked me before this if I would talk about some of the things that, I, uh, that I've enjoyed when I go there to visit and maybe pass on those tips to you, uh, especially if you're there when it's a lot warmer. Uh, as I learned a couple of years ago, I went during American Labor Day, and that's uh, kind of our anchor at the end of summer, our holiday in America. Even though I've lived here in London for 22 years, I, I like to go back for July 4th, and I like to go this weekend. Uh, uh, it recently was a Memorial Day, and uh, but then also Labor Day. Well, let me tell you, when I got there in Labor Day, you were talking about 40, 45 degrees. I think we got up to 48 degrees. It was hotter than it was hotter than the hinges on the doors to Hades <laughs> while I was there. <laughs> and, and, you know, when it's that hot, you either want to be the, the great thing is almost everywhere is air conditioned. But some of the fun things about Palm Springs are walking uh, up and down uh, a Palm Canyon Drive, whether it's the southern part or the northern part. But it's, when it's that hot, you literally, I remember we could only walk one block. And then we were like, okay, I need a martini. <laughs> I need a beer. I need, I need a gin and tonic. I need something to drink. But you want to find things that you can do during that. So one of, one of the things, and you're right, that surrealness of capturing this look, down at the southern end of uh, the main drag, I keep saying Palm Canyon Drive, um, down at the southern end, there are some antique malls. They're almost uh, what we would call strip malls in America, where they're they're uh, like a one-story building or two-story building uh, that there are multiple shops in. And with these, there there are a few of them uh, where you go in, and it is like stepping back in time, and and you can buy the items in there. They're like a regular antique mall, but instead of being antiques that we might go to the Cotswolds to look at here that are from the 1800s or the 1700s. Um, here in Palm Springs, they're from the mid 1950s or even, even dating a little bit earlier than that. And, and in particular, a lot of these places because they have different rooms set up, um, all of the kitchen stuff, they may have recreated a mid-century kitchen in a house. <laughs> so you've got the oven that's for sale, uh, the hostess set for sale, the cocktail swizzle sticks from 1962 to the bed napkins. Uh, and it, it is fascinating. Then you go into the living room and you have those 
you you see a bar set up with the tiki glasses and you got the old lamps um, or the old chairs or the old carpets. Uh, one of them, the bedroom, you walk in and there are walk-in closets and in there they're selling the clothes that are the old cocktail dresses, the Lily Pulitzer pink and orange cocktail dresses that women would wear around the pools. The artwork is for sale on the walls. And, and I, I spent half a day going to these uh, during that Labor Day weekend. I was there primarily well for two reasons, because uh, it was really cool, but it was just so darn hot outside that we had to do something inside that was covered in, in air conditioned. And I found it fascinating. And I think if I lived in the States, I probably would have gone broke that weekend buying everything uh, because, it, of course, I would have shipped it to where I lived in the state. But it, would, it was a lot more to ship over here to England. So, uh, so you really, even though that was a time period from the 1950s, you can still see that and be a part of that now um, by going to Palm Springs. And I think that's one of the most fascinating and fun things now that it's it's kind of a time capsule part of part of the greater Palm Springs area is locked into that time period. Yeah, absolutely. And I, th I think it's also worth mentioning if people like the normal kind of shopping, you're definitely going to be sport for choice in, in terms of everything from the high end shops down to the the usual malls and so you know they've got some really massive versions. I remember there was a Macy's there that was absolutely huge. So right. uh, yeah, there's plenty of shopping. But as you said, you definitely need a car to get around because I think people again in in the UK perhaps don't appreciate the distance and the lack of public transport somewhere like that where it's very hard to get around unless you use some sort of car, whether it's Uber or a rental car. Um, so yeah, definitely we had a rental car and I think we would have struggled without it. At night we used Ubers to go out so we could have a few uh, lovely martinis. But yes. uh, yeah, during the day we definitely use use the car a lot to get around because it's it's a massive area. It goes, you know, from the downtown out to I think we were in is it Rancho Mirage? Rancho, Rancho is, Mirage at the Ritz Carlton. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we were at the Ritz Carlton. It's a, that's a lovely, very upmarket area. So yeah, you definitely need need a car uh, unless you're going to pay a fortune in Ubers everywhere. Right. And uh, but I uh, I'm glad you brought up the Uber thing because that uh, you're absolutely right. If you do want to go out and have some cocktails for dinner, uh, that's that's part of the whole scene in Palm Springs. And uh, not only having a cocktail at the restaurant you're going to, but it's quite fun because there's so many really cool cocktail bars now in Palm Springs that you can either, or do both, uh, that pre-dinner cocktail and or that post-dinner cocktail at different places. And it's so easy to get an Uber there as it is throughout most of California, probably because Uber is originally from California area, but, uh, you know, and it's a smart thing to do also if you are going, going to be having drinks because you're right, it is a spread out area um, and, and you just don't want to take the chance with, with uh, you know, having that one too many. Well, exactly. I mean, one thing that stood out to me, which which I hadn't really noticed so much in, in the US, but actually in, on my recent visit, I also noticed it, is the drinks are much larger. Um, <laughs> oh, hang on. I've got a call coming. Let me just try and um, how do I get rid of that? Yeah. Why is it not showing me an option to... <laughs> Get rid of it. I think that's it. <clears throat> oh, just need to get you back again. No problem. There we go. Um, what was that? Oh, yes. Uh, so we were talking cost. about um, how spread it out, out it is, and uh, Uber is very easy to get. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. The, so the martinis, I, I hadn't really uh, realised before because I guess maybe I hadn't ordered them in the US. I tend to normally drink wine, but the drinks are huge. I remember being given a martini at a place called Spencer's, which is a great restaurant, uh, particularly with a massive outdoor patio. And I had this martini there. I literally had one and I felt drunk because it must have had about four measures in it, at least of gin. And yeah. they're absolutely huge. So definitely be very wary of of the drinks there because they're a lot bigger than a bit like everything in America. <laughs> they're a lot yeah. bigger than you would, you would get here. So uh, it, uh, it doesn't take much to, to end up being a bit, a bit drunk after one drink. I, I remember uh, 
uh, years ago, my my husband is English, and uh, I remember years ago his uh, the first time we went to America together to go visit my parents and stay with them. And we went to a bar and he had, and it was our first night there. So he was a little bit jet lagged and all that. And, you know, he had his usual couple of cocktails. And at the end he said, oh my gosh, I am so tipsy. Uh, and I said, it's the American pores. And he was not used to that. And uh, yeah, I, I always forget that too. And, you know, if you go out and have three cocktails, I always tell people I. Uh, be careful, otherwise you'll be telling fortunes after cocktail number four. <laughs> so, <laughs> especially <absolutely>. martinis. <laughs> well, well, that kind of nicely leads us into one of the recommendations you gave me about a place uh, to have a drink called Paul's. Is it Paul's Bar, I believe? Yeah, it's it's called the, well, it's called uh, the Paul Bar, Paul Bar, and uh, the website's www.thepaul.com. Bar P A the T H E P A U L B A R P S, which is for Palm Springs.com. So the Paul Bar P S dot uh P S dot com. Uh it's a kind of near this is the great thing about Palm Springs, also. I mean, there is that Canyon Road that is the main drag, but the greater Palm Springs area, there's just so much going on. You never know when you're gonna run into something. And yes, it was my friends had told me about it, and I told you, uh, Michelle, when you went with our dear friend Katie to go there. And this is in one of those, again, those little strip mall. And, and if you'll remember, I told you, I said, I'm going to send you to this. And it's by the airport. It's in a very industrial area. And you're going to drive up to this and you're going to look at it with blacked out windows and wonder what in the world was Patrick Hoy <laughs> thinking? <laughs> And right next to it is a weed dispensary because, you know, um, now you can, it's legal to buy and smoke marijuana and eat edibles. And we'll go into that in a minute. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute in Palm Springs. And Paul Bar is next to that. But anyway, when you walk into this, when you open the door and walk into this bar, there's this old antique, probably from the 1930s wooden bar lining one whole row of this and all the bartenders are um in in bow ties and uh and then the owner paul who's from new york is there and uh he's quite a character and he opened this place and it's not that big you can get food but it they serve kind of old prohibition cocktails don't they michelle yeah, absolutely. And uh, you, you were right about the look of it. We, we were going past it thinking, where is he sending us? It looks like the opening <laughs> episode of CSI where they find the body in some dodgy area. That is so true. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good description. <laughs> and then and then when you go in part of this, so not only are the drinks great and it's this little, I mean, it's not a secret bar, but but when you walk in, you just wouldn't expect this, especially again, because of location. But then you get this owner, Paul, who's from New York, and he moved there, and uh, and he's an absolute riot, and he's also a pistol. I mean, he's got this attitude. I would, I went in, and I think I told you, you know, during um, during COVID, uh, when we were still uh, going through all of that, I went the Labor Day I went. This was my first um, trip out of the UK. Uh, after COVID or during, you know, as with, they were easing up. So I went in September, 2021. And, uh, but you still had to show your COVID pass and, and California was one of those who were kind of like the UK where they had digital COVID passes. So when you walked into the bar, not only because in the state of California, and by the way, I don't care if you're, if you're 22 or 21, the legal age, or if you're 91, always, uh, when you're in America, not just in Palm Springs, make sure you're carrying some type of government issued ID, uh, especially in California. It is the law in California that regardless of what age you are, you must have the ID on you when you go to a bar. Say it's, you just have to have that, even if you look like you're 500 years old. So anyway, uh, as is the case, usually when you walk in there, Paul, the owner, like any other owner, will say, hi, and, and he's very short and abrupt, I need your ID, 
<laughs> and, uh, you know, has that very New York accent. I need your ID. And uh, so you showed them. And during this time, you also had to show your COVID pass. And I remember my first time going in there with my friends, James and Todd and the group. Uh, they said, just wait, you'll you'll see what this guy is like. And I uh, <laughs> and so the p- couple in front of us, he uh, s- uh he said, oh, hey, how are you? And they said, oh, we loved it so much. We're back again tonight. He said, oh, thank you for coming back. Yes, you were in last night. And he said, ID, and they got it. Well, they didn't have their um, COVID pass with them. They were they didn't have the electronic one. And even though they had been there the day before, he remembered them. He said, sorry, no pass. Get the hell out of my bar. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I was sitting there and I was going, oh, my gosh, he's serious. And they're like, but we were here last night. He said, I'm not putting my business in jeopardy because of you. Out. <laughs> and, so, and so and if you go look at Yelp reviews, this is what's so funny about the guy. And, and let me preface this by saying once you're in there, the service is fantastic, as you very well know. Right. Yeah. I mean, they they were plowing you with drinks. I think he even treated you to a drink, didn't he? Yeah, we got we got a, a special sort of cocktail shot each from Paul. <laughs> yeah, well, well, my friends who live there locally, when I told them that you got that from Paul, they were like, what the heck is this about? <laughs> we're here like four <laughs> times a week and he's never given us anything. <laughs> so, but um, anyway, uh, you know, uh, people will write uh, TripAdvisor and Yelp reviews. And in America, there are people who make a living doing this. I, I, well, not really, but you know, I, you would think they have nothing better to do because there are people who will go on and write narratives of, and complain about everything. And uh, you know, most business owners, when they see a negative uh, um, TripAdvisor or Yelp review, they will of course look at that and say, oh my gosh, I'm, you know, hey, I went to this bar last night and really bad service. And the owner will get on there and say, oh, I'm really sorry you had a bad time. You know, you must have caught us at a, not a good night. I'm so sorry about that. I hope you'll give us another chance. If so, please, here's my here's our number. Give me a call and I'll look after you personally. And uh, if you look at Paul's, I mean, there are great, great reviews, but then on the negative ones, like, oh, I went in, then they they were rude to me, blah, blah, blah. And and you look at that. He doesn't try and fix it. He goes, good, you were rude too. Don't ever come back to my place. <laughs> <laughs> and if you remember, I told you that and you said, oh my gosh, I looked up the reviews. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Yeah, they're worth a read just just for a laugh. <laughs> oh, I, I I mean they yeah, with without a doubt, um, uh, doing that. But what's even more worth it is going in there and having a drink. And he also does food as well. So this is one of those places that I would do either pre dinner or post dinner. I will tell you that when I was there in March this year, packed. I mean, he really. It, they just become more and more popular, but uh, I think it's or it's definitely one of my favorite places to go to. One of my other favorite places is where you stayed was the Ritz Carlton, um, and it's in Rancho Mirage, that Greater Palm Springs area, and one of those great places to go for a pre dinner drink, I think. And if you're not staying at the hotel, I mean, we all know that the Ritz Carltons are beautiful, and you are going to pay a, a nice penny for for a drink there uh but the good thing is they valet park for free um so when when you go up there if you're going in for dinner or drink and just to be able to look to see that view of of the desert and the mountains and to have that cocktail as the sun is going down it's it's an absolutely special place did you did you like staying there yeah we really liked it it was um very peaceful, uh, as you say, beautiful views because it's quite a long way sort of up the hill. So uh, nothing really around it, which we like. And we did have a drink on the terrace um, at right. sunset, which was lovely. Uh, really nice pools there, including an adult only. The rooms were large. So they may be a little, I don't know about old fashioned. Some people might view them as that, but they're kind of that desert feel um, of decor that you get with the kind of the dark wood and the sand tones. Um, yeah. Very well equipped. Staff were lovely. Yeah, I would, I would say there again, it was very comfortable. I wouldn't say it was the interior was the most stunning yeah. thing, but the the grounds and the, the beautiful views. I think it, 
part of it probably was because it was post COVID. We went in twenty, the end of twenty twenty one, so right. some things weren't open then. Um, because they have a lovely steakhouse there, um, yes. which was open when we were there. But yeah, it was it was definitely if you want kind of a luxury place that's very quiet, that's probably the place to go. And of course, you can use your Marriott points, which is great, which c- yeah. takes the cost down. But yeah, it's, it's definitely not not cheap like anywhere in America at the moment. It's it's pricey and. Um, the other place that I think um, I would mention whilst we're talking about hotels and drinks would be the Parker. Have you 100%. been to that? 100% I would say, and and I'd say the upkeep on that, it's it's more of a um, what I would expect in, um, of decor, uh, service. Again, the Ritz-Carlton, you've got great service, but I'm, I'm with you. I think most hotels... Um, in the Palm Springs area, phenomenal location. Pool that's at the base of the mountains. You walk outside, you're in a super location, but but a little bit dark on the inside, kind of like the Ritz, not, not that brightness <laughs> that you, you would think that you would get with Palm Springs. Yeah, I, I liked the Parker, I think, because it's very retro. Um, it's very upmarket, extremely expensive. So if you can't afford to stay there, it's definitely worth going um, for a drink or something to eat. And we'll come on to restaurants shortly. Um, yeah. But just to kind of talk about how to finish with hotels, I stayed in somewhere called The Sands, which is an independent hotel. But you can get perks through um, our travel agents, GTC, oh, yes. uh, who I booked with. Um, and it used to be an old motel, I'm guessing probably from the 50s. And they've converted it into a boutique hotel around a sort of central pool and courtyard and it doesn't have the views um because it's sort of on the flat um but it's just beautifully done it's almost got a bit of a it's done by a well-known designer that i can't remember their name at the moment but it's got almost a moroccan feel with that kind of um sort of pinkish terracotta finished and it's got fairy lights and fire pits and a great little restaurant it's very small it's literally one pool sort of surrounded by a few rooms um but it's got a good location it's it's sort of like halfway between the center of palm springs and rancho mirage so it's good for kind of going between two different areas um and yeah the rooms there are really nice of course it's quite new it's only done a few years ago but it's got that retro um but modern feel. I remember the, that I ended up buying one afterwards because I had a pineapple um, ice bucket, a gold pineapple ice bucket in my room. <laughs> and I couldn't fit it in my luggage much as I tried. So right. I came home and I bought one because I liked yeah. the style because it had like a whole little cocktail set up. So yeah, oh, cool. I enjoyed that. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, um, it, speaking of another place that, uh, 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 two things right here. So there's a uh, hotel I did not go into, but I went to the bar that was on the edge of the hotel, uh, which was on North Palm Canyon Drive. So again, the main strip. And uh, the hotel was called the Twist Palm Springs, like like a twist. And, um, uh, and you can look that up online because while we were at this bar, which I'll talk about in a second for a pre-dinner cocktail, um, I thought, oh my gosh, this bar is absolutely lovely. The bar was called Taylor Shop and and like a tailor. And the drinks are named after after like uh, tailor terms, tailoring terms, kind of like it it would be a bar you would think would be on Savile Row. Um, and, And really outstanding place to go for a proper um, drink like a, you know, Gimlet's and Gibson's and martinis and old fashions. Um, But they were part of this or on the edge of this hotel called The Twist. And if you go look up them up online, and if you're looking, uh, I haven't stayed there. So I, you know, you'll need to read reviews and all that. But the pictures, all of the rooms, they're kind of apartments, self-catering, and they're different sizes but it is a throwback to mid-century with the orange kitchen, (laughs) Uh, with the, you know, the pink bathroom, the flamingo pink bathroom, the lime green pool area. And they have painstakingly done this, the area rugs, you know, the kidney shaped uh, cocktail tables, very uh, Palm Springs, part of that mid-century. If you are listening to this or watching, you don't know what that is. Think, uh, if you remember the cartoon, The Jetsons, uh, 
<laughs> Remember the Jetsons? It's very Jetsons in this hotel, uh, the twist. So, so it is a place that uh, I'm hoping that I know someone who goes at some point and, and can give some feedback. But that looked to me w- what I would think if I were going to Palm Beach uh, where I'd want to go. So that, that was my third bar recommendation, the Taylor, as in T-A-I-L-O-R, Taylor Shop. And uh, that will lead us into dinner because that's we we did a really nice cocktail before we went to dinner at one of my new favorite places in Palm Springs. So um, one of my favorite places was um, what we talked about earlier, the Parker. So they have um, in the grounds this really tiny tapas bar. And I'll put all that basically all we've talked about, Patrick, I'll put all the links below. So I'll put a link to that uh, tapas bar. And it was just very interesting. You basically sit around a bar um, so it's quite social if you want it to be. Uh, they have a list of different tapas, which were really outstanding, um, and a lot of really interesting wines. And I really like the fact you could get each wine in in lots of different quantities. So like from a tiny little taste to a sort of bigger carafe, it was really nice because you could kind of have, you know, I guess the, the idea is you have a small plate and then you have a small amount of wine to go with it. And then you have your next one and then you try something different with it. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. The food there was, was absolutely excellent and a really great great experience as well not just kind of a normal restaurant i my friends have been there and they and sp- i mean they've been to the parker for drinks but they specifically went there and absolutely loved it said the food was great um i love the fact again that you could get a, a small glass of wine a larger glass of wine you could do half a carafe you could do a craft you could do the full bottle and and of course being in california an amazing wine selection. Um, I heard you mention Spencer's. Yes. I've, I've not been to Spencer's. There are two biggie restaurants. Uh, if you ask people for kind of the top shishi, uh, really good restaurants. And when I say shishi, you don't have to wear a suit in. This is Palm Springs. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I almost anywhere you go, you see men. I mean, you need to check dress codes but you see men who are probably in Bermuda shorts, you know, it's that dressier resort casual and women who are in uh, in midi dresses and maxi dresses and uh, whatnot. But I've heard great things about Spencer's. Did you, did you like it? Yeah, absolutely loved it. That was, that was probably my favorite. Although I loved the place at the Parker, I think because this was outside and it was well heated and it has like the fairy lights just and hanging lights. It just feels uh, kind of a special place, quite romantic, and the food is is not too unapproachable. Although it's quite, it's a fancy restaurant in some ways. I think it might be connected to the tennis club, if I'm right. Um, it's it's you know steaks and seafood and that sort of fairly um, you know standard fare that's not too fine dining, but still sophisticated so it's not like the thing I don't like about America is the huge portion so you know it's more right. more reasonably uh done there and the service is great they were really friendly but just that atmosphere of sitting in this big courtyard with a tree sort of overhanging it with all the lights in it yeah it was really a special place I thought and the food was really good as well but yeah no, nothing yeah. too fancy which I like sometimes you know you don't want really fine dining every night so uh yeah really enjoyed that I think there's probably something that everybody would enjoy there I, I totally agree. And it's it's one of those special occasion places for an anniversary, um, a birthday, uh, you know, at, at the I was saying there are two main places when you ask people, where, especially the locals, uh, you know, what are the two best places to go to? And, and that one always comes up on the list. And the other one is another one called Copley's or Copley's. Did you have you been there? Yeah, we went to Copley's or Copley's as well, which is a similar sort of place. We're sitting outside, um, some really good cocktails there. I enjoyed that one as well. I think uh, probably out of the two, Spencer's had the edge for me, but I found them quite similar. Yes, well, there's there's some great... uh, I did go this last time to uh, Copley's. Uh, It was my friend Jane's birthday, so there were four of us who went, so it was a special occasion meal. And in fact, when I asked a local, I said, okay, which, because they had asked me, which one do you want to go to, James and Todd? And uh, so I, of course, did what I usually do. I just asked people who were local, whom I met, (laughs) and said, so out of these. And they said, well, if you're doing a special occasion, probably go to Copley's. 
uh, for that. Uh, and so uh, the neat thing about that, and that's on North Palm Canyon Drive, it's kind of right in the middle, but um, you are, the, I don't know if you know about that restaurant, that used to be part of the Cary Grant estate. Um, not all of his, the actor Cary Grant, not all of his estate is there. Now, um, uh, Cary Grant had been married. It was a reportedly a, an arranged marriage by the studio at that time, but he was, uh, and after the fact is known as was being gay and the pool house apparently, um, was that it was kind of like a muse, like a, a stable house where they had guest cottages. And so apparently that's where, uh, the, the men used to stay, not the, in, not in the main house, um, but the younger guys would stay out at the pool. And now this pool area is now this restaurant and it is absolutely beautiful. We sat outside, there's some indoor dining as well. Uh, I think the menu is very, very similar to Spencer's. As you said, I think that's a great word, approachable menu. They have the steaks. They're not gigantic overheating portions but but it's top-notch food it's they've got a chef in the kitchen they've won lots of awards and and you're just stepping back that whole Cary Grant thing also with the history of Palm Springs and being able to be outside and as I said earlier we had the heat lamps as well um but the service was incredible I mean we had, we had a guy who was absolutely amazing um, so I can highly recommend it. Next time I'm there, I'm definitely going to Spencer's though. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I think there was one other place that you mentioned to me that I didn't get to go that I think was in the center. Do you remember which you said was good for brunch? Does that ring a bell? Uh, yes. So I was going to mention that the other meal besides dinner. So we've talked about cocktails <laughs> and we've talked about um, uh, dinner uh, some favorite places. Another place that's great for dinner, but and also for cocktails. Uh, but they are rated. It's called the Tropical, uh, and it's kind of in the middle of town. It's off of Canyon Drive, but walking distance. They have a terrace and garden. Um, they have a, a bar outside as well. They've been featured in different TV shows, and uh, they've hit. They've are in a top of a lot of the like top 100 places to go for brunch in the United States. Um, it is kind of stepping back in town as you can uh, get from the name Tropical. It's a little bit Hawaiian, think flamingo pinks <laughs> and, and those uh, mid-century colors. Uh, they do, I, um, I'm a coconut fan and they do a coconut martini that is so darn good. <laughs> and especially if it's been a really hot day and you just need something so refreshing. Um, it's, it's amazing, but they do a great job, a, a great, great job in their food. Food is really good. And it's a buzzy place. You do have to make reservations though. I mean, I've, I have rocked up there later after dinner and gone for like the nightcap and being able to get into the bar outside. But again, as you would expect in America and in Palm Springs, really great service. Um, another brunch place I will recommend that I haven't told you about, Michelle, that I went to this last time because uh, uh, while we were there, it was my friend James' birthday. A bunch of our LA friends came down for the weekend so that we could all celebrate. And they knew of a place uh, that's called Wilma and Frida's. I don't know if you went, but it's in one of these, uh, again, shopping mall type things. And I don't mean shopping mall is in uh, Westfield, but kind of strip mall where, you know, lots of stores, all uh, exterior entrances. And uh, this one's at Palm Canyon, South Palm Canyon Drive. And it's uh, the brunch there is what you would expect from an American brunch. This is huge portions, <laughs> you know, where the omelets are are bigger than a newborn baby. Um, <laughs> uh, they had one of my I had there because you can't get it here, and it's something that I miss. But it's certainly uh, not something to eat if you're on a diet. Uh, <laughs> is uh, we have this thing biscuits. Uh, and gravy and biscuits are kind of like uh, 
bread rolls, like a um, a breakfast biscuit, if you will. Um, and then it has a gravy with sausage, ch chopped up sausage, ground sausage in the gravy. And some places will do like a red eyed uh, sausage gravy, which means there's probably cayenne pepper and it's a little bit spicier. Anyway, they, they had this there and they, uh, I wish I could show you the picture. They had a Bloody Mary with like this huge um uh olives coming out of it and also a uh, gigantic candied um bacon strip wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible and it was just it was the perfect place for lunch we didn't feel rushed um they had it down even though it was busy they give you a buzzer uh, that you can carry with you and they'll tell you we will buzz you. You have you can go walk around Palm Springs, the area, but do not walk further than 10 minutes away because when we buzz you, you have to be back here within 10 minutes or we will give your table away. So they really had it down where you're not locked there having to wait. Um, but I would highly recommend that Wilma and Frida's. Great, great brunch place. Perfect. Well, that's some great recommendations. I'm definitely going to try a couple of those because uh, I'm planning to go back uh, in September, October this year when we meet up. Yes, I'm, I'm back there and I'm going back for uh, Labor Day <laughs> this year uh, just because I thought, well, why not? And during the BA sale, I was able to get a really good deal. I'm going out of Dublin doing one of those trips and through Dallas and and got a really really good fare so i thought okay hey listen i've got a place to stay and and that is a time because it is so hot i'm i'm sure you are going at that time and staying in hotels the, they're probably a lot less pricier than they would be in january february and march yeah definitely so i think that that leads us really well into getting to palm springs because it's not somewhere that you know got a major airport like LA for example it's um got an airport but it's very small and you can only fly there from certain connection points in the US um but I think some people don't even think about flying there they think about oh we'll go to LA and then we'll just drive so I don't know how you found the drive but I personally hated it I was expecting it to be far more scenic I didn't expect to spend the whole time on a massive freeway full of traffic. I thought, you know, there'd be a bit of that. And then suddenly it would open out and you'd be in the desert and it would be a lovely drive. And it very much wasn't. No, there, it's a horrible buildup. Um, you know, you're and, and I think if you're going there the first time and I re thought the same thing you did, you know, you think, OK, I'm leaving the concrete of L.A. We're going to drive, drive, drive. And oh my God, it's going to be an oasis in front of our eyes. And it's not. I mean, I think the best thing about the drive is that if you're a shopper, which I know you are, Michelle, um, there are just on the outskirts of Palm Springs, greater Palm Springs area, when you come in, there are the outlet malls. <laughs> and the outlet malls are pretty darn good. <laughs> They're really, really good. And in fact, if you're not driving to Palm Springs and you're just staying in Palm Springs, you can still go to the outlet malls. But I think that's the only good thing about the drive uh, also with that drive depending on when you go it literally could take you an hour and a half or it could take you five hours um, depending on is it a holiday weekend are you going on a Friday after work are you trying to get back on a Sunday night because because it is fairly close to LA there are so many people who go for the weekend there are people who have their weekend homes there. Um, so you cannot rely on, uh, on how long that transportation is going to take. Oddly enough, also, there are not that many direct flights from L.A. to Palm Springs. <laughs> there are a ton on Air Alaska. Is it Air Alaska? Um, Alaska Air um, from San Francisco. <laughs> but not from LA and you can get there from Phoenix and you can get there directly from Dallas, but it's odd, not from the other. You, the other option is you could do Amtrak, which I had looked at one time, uh, but it's you, uh, during COVID that was next to impossible. And I think even now it's not operating fully. And I think you have to change and get off Amtrak and then get on a coach uh, to go there. So yeah, it's, um, 
uh, from here, if you're flying in um, and you're going directly there, of course, as you said, you can't go directly. But the last time I did it, I did it through Dublin, as I'm doing in September, as I said. And I went through Dallas and then I had a direct flight from Dallas to there. Yeah. Yeah, so those, I think all the ones we're, uh, Patrick and I are both um, One World um, collectors. Uh, so that all of those are available on One World. I had a look earlier um, in case people wanted to use Virgin or Sky Team, and Salt Lake City seems to be a good connection point if you're using Delta, for example. Okay. Obviously, you could fly with Virgin to LA uh, or um, San Francisco and then uh, get a a separate connection if necessary but yeah you can you can do it both on, on either alliance it's it fairly easy you just need to do a bit of research and every now and again they do have some good sales i remember from dublin um it might, last year there were some really good fares to what i call secondary cities like palm springs where it was around 1200 pounds which i stupidly yeah. didn't book and i should have done because it when i went to book it it disappeared but yeah it's, it's definitely worth looking if you're looking at those sort of dublin fares and seeing what's available because sometimes you can get some really good deals Right. So I have heard, so on my last trip there, when I was flying on my London to DFW leg, I was on BA, uh, right, London, yeah, to DFW to Dallas. And then from Dallas, of course, I was transferring to go to Palm Springs. Um, and on my flight, uh, there was uh, the first officer came and introduced himself to me and we were speaking and he has a house in Palm Springs. And he actually, Michelle, as you know, we're part of a group um, for gold and above members on Facebook. And, uh, and he was a member of that group as well. And so he knew my name. He said, I was going through the manifest and he said, oh my gosh, is this Patrick Hoy from the group, I've got to come meet you. So, which I was surprised when he came to me, I thought, who is this and why is the captain or the first officer with me? Are they not going to let me off the plane? What have I done? And so, anyway, he came to say hello. And he has a house in Palm Springs, he and his partner. And uh, he was telling me that they get a lot of fares because, of course, you know, they have to pay for their tickets as well. And uh, and he's gold guest list like you and I are. Um, and he told me that they are usually very good fares year round going out of, is it Budapest or one yeah. of the places? Yeah. One Budapest, yeah. And, and he said, even you can get lucky last minute. Um, doing that, not the six month or, or four month mm -hmm. ones, but last minute. So that might be something I haven't tried that yet, but um, it's definitely worth looking at because I think if you, if you can fly in there or, or if you're going to, uh, you know, to combine that with a Vegas trip, you know, would be, would be a good thing because you've done that drive, haven't you? Yes, unfortunately. So I I really wanted to see the Joshua Tree and that drive is known as being pretty scenic and it's complete opposite from doing the drive from LA. It's pretty much uh, open roads, very little traffic all through the desert and it goes, there are, there are ways that you can go actually and drive through the Joshua Tree National Park. But unfortunately, the day I was going to do it, they had the biggest storm of like 10 years. Oh, yeah, that's I couldn't, right. I was I was advised not to go through the Joshua Tree, and it was the worst drive I've ever done in my life. So it was snowing, it was torrential rain. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. So my plan is that when I revisit this time, I'm going to do the drive again, and <laughs> hopefully, fingers crossed, actually manage to do it without fearing for my life most of the drive. But normally, it should be lovely scenic. It's I think it it would normally take around about three and a half hours as a minimum. But right. I think. It, sort of thing you want to allow a day stop off have some lunch somewhere you know take your time in the park see the scenery don't rush it so I would definitely allow lots of time because there's plenty to see along the way but I personally if you wanted to drive I think that's the way to do it because you're kind of rather than just driving for the sake of getting somewhere it's actually the experience and the scenery uh, the right. bits I could see look lovely but most of the time I couldn't see a thing so <laughs> it's uh yeah that's that's a, a good tip if you fancy perhaps doing a two center where you've got Palm Springs with a relaxation and obviously Vegas is very full on so I think that's quite quite a nice combination the only thing yeah. to say is when it's good weather in Palm Springs, normally in Vegas, it's it's quite cool. So right. just 
be aware of that because you know in December in Vegas it's normally only around 15 sometimes can be you know even sort of in single figures right well um I'm glad you brought that up about that drive between the two between Vegas and there so if you're doing that, like you said, to take your time doing it, but even if you don't do uh, Vegas and you're doing that day trip outside of Palm Springs to go to Joshua, um, to the Joshua Tree National Park, I will tell you, um, if you do a little bit of planning and you can do some research on this, there are some really, really cool art installations these are outdoor art installations that are up year round um, in that in between because you because you have the big music festival and the Coachella uh, Burning Man and the Coachella Valley. Um, there's a lot of art now within that area, not just the standard galleries that you get on the high street in Palm Springs. Uh, but you have these wonderful outdoor installations. And, and my friends who live in uh, Palm Springs, as we went to Joshua uh, Tree National Park, we stopped at a lot of these. Um, there's one that's called Noah's Art um, <laughs> instead of Noah's Ark. And it's a guy named Noah Purifoy, and he's taken discard, discarded used items like um, kitchens and toilets and uh, furniture. And it, and it looks like a salvage yard, but it's this crazy art installation. There's the world famous um, cro Crochet Museum. I'm not making that up. <laughs> Seriously. Um, okay. Yes. If you've ever been to Glastonbury, which I've been to, there's an area in Glastonbury for anyone who's listening or watching that's called Shangri-La. And uh, part of Glastonbury is not just the music festival, but it's an arts festival as well and theater festival. And there's outdoor installations uh, that are there. It's the same. It's very similar to that as you drive um uh, to Joshua Tree National Park. There's one place that's an alternative universe that you go. I mean, it's wacky and weird. So definitely look that up. In fact, I would do a Google search or an internet search for um, outdoor art installations, Palm Springs to Joshua <laughs> and do that. And, and as Michelle said, then you can take your time uh, really enjoying that. And then one last thing I do want to say about you, we were talking about flying into Palm Springs for all the aviation geeks like, like myself and like you, Michelle, um, that this time when I flew in in March, I, from that, uh, we were on a smaller American Airlines uh, jet going from uh, Dallas into Palm Springs and you have the mountains right there. And as you can see right behind you, uh, Michelle, your backdrop on this, that's very much what it looks like. And as you come into the airport, it's a very small airport and the airport's really cool. Um, it's all open air. So there are restaurants, you know, because you have this year round great weather. Anyway, as we were going in and I was sitting next to a guy who was a local, he was a doctor from Palm Springs. We were literally at the point of touching down. I mean, you, I, I could almost feel it. And all of a sudden we shot back up and it scared the living bejesus out of me. <laughs> and the whole plane went eerily silent. And I mean, this silence was a good couple of minutes. Like people were holding their breath as we were quickly escalating up because there's not a lot of room. The runway is very small. And then the guy next to me said that's um, probably he whispered to me. He said that's happened to me before. It's wind shears. I think that's what they call it. Yeah. And you may know that from your air traffic days. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Wind yes. Yeah. Well, I'm telling again, it scared the bejesus out of me and everyone else. Um, and he said, oh, boy, last time that happened to me, um, we had to go to Phoenix and we had to overnight in Phoenix. <laughs> and so. He said, let's see what happened. So we weighed it and weighed it. And again, it, you could hear a pin drop. And then the captain finally came out and he said, well, <laughs> hello, everyone. <laughs> Let me tell you what just happened. He said, this is very, very common, by the way. This happens in Palm Springs. And he, I think, again, it's called the wind shearing. And he explained it to us. He said, 
So here's the good news. And he said, this happens at this time of day, uh, time of night. And it is that later 6 p.m. onwards. And um, he said, the good news is, is that um, as the evening wears on, uh, this lessens, the, these winds go down. And the other good news is we got lots of fuel in the plane so we can just keep trying this <laughs> and i thought holy moly we're going to do this a few more times so <laughs> you everyone sort of relaxed but anyway the next one we actually did make it but i had never had that happen to me before and apparently that is common at the greater palm springs airport <laughs> so, so maybe try not to fly in in the uh, early evening that's it yes very good advice <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Unless, unless you want a bit of excitement for the day. <laughs> true, true. It's a story I'll have forever. And, and something, as I said, I've, I've uh, never had happened to me before. And, and again, it just shows you the miracle of, of how well these aircraft are designed, but also how trained pilots are. And, and also people like yourself, the air traffic controllers, <laughs> in, in being able to spot this and know exactly what to do with it and, and be trained on what to do. So, yeah, they, they have a, an alert in the cockpit that goes off when there's yeah. wind shift. Okay. And yeah, the, the, generally they would uh, yeah go around. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it can be very dangerous if they, if they carried on. So well, yeah, they, did, they did the right thing. I'm guessing it's to do with the mountains there. I'm guessing right. that's what that, that's Exactly what it was. Well, let me tell you, the alarm went off in my body as well, <laughs> automatically went off. And I was definitely ready for a cocktail at Paul Bar um, <laughs> when I got off that plane. <laughs> well, fortunately, they're very large, so it would have done the trick. <laughs> <laughs> they did. It did. <laughs> well, I think that probably kind of wraps things up unless you've got any other um, tips that you want to just end with, Patrick. No, I just, I, hey, listen, you know, if you haven't been, please go there and, and uh, have a great time. And, and I know Michelle is going to post this. And, and if there's a place, there will be a place to leave comments. And, and I would love because it is a place that I'm going back to. In fact, as I said, in September, and I will continue to go back since my, my dearest and best friend lives there, as long as he'll keep letting me come back. Um, if you have some of your favorite places that you've been, Michelle, if you don't mind, if they could write it in the comments right there, um, I'd, I'd love to hear those. And, and I know you're going back, Michelle. Uh, that would be great fun. And, I, and I'll definitely go try some of, uh, some of your viewers and readers' um, recommendations as well. Absolutely. Yep. Feel free to pop a comment below and we'll put all the links to everything we've talked about today in the comments as well. So thank you so much for all your words of wisdom, Patrick. I've learned a few things about Palm Springs and, and hopefully it encourages people to visit such a beautiful city. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and as always, thank you for letting me be a part of uh, your blog and, and part of this new, your weekly podcast, which I've listened to every single one of them. And as you know, I'm one of your biggest fans of your blog and have been for years. And, and I'm extremely grateful that you and I have become good friends as well. So thank you very much for including me. Absolutely. Well, that's all for this week. Until next time, happy travels.